So, what are the present uh, uh, available uh, uh, technologies? Uh, so, where are these technologies being uh, adapted? Very important. So, when you look into the transmission uh, system, uh, this uh, power line uh, carrier communication, an example, uh, could be used for uh, communication for various aspects. So, either uh, power line carrier communication or electrical telecom cables, which are uh, a general telecom cables which are being used for communication uh, directly or it could be fiber optic cables or the overhead uh, ground wires, optical ground wires OPGW. Uh, so, these are some of the technologies which are being adopted by the transmission or distribution utilities uh, for proper communication of the data. So, these uh, technologies and finally, being the radio, radio uh, signals. So, these are the technologies which are being used for to communicate with the communication equipment. Further, the communication of this equipment uh, could also be uh, expanded for uh, the speech or it could be for the teleprotection or it could be for the data transfer. So, several of this uh, benefits are being uh, got with the technologies uh, for the communication in the power uh, networks. So, further the available technologies uh, in the communication media, uh, what type of technology is being adopted and what services uh, could be provided with the available technology and the communication media are highlighted here. So, communication media could be as mentioned earlier, it could be power line carrier, it could be distribution line carrier uh, communication, it could be using the simple coaxial cables, it could be using the copper uh, conductors, it could be the radio relay link particularly working at uh, microwave uh, frequency, uh, the optical fibers cables which are being used in the communication and very high frequency and uh, ultra high frequency radio signals which are used for uh, the communication and finally, the satellite uh, communication. So, several of this communication uh, media are being uh, used for the uh, transmission and uh, monitoring of the data. The technologies which are uh, available are either a wired type of technology or wireless communication. Again wireless communication several of these uh, technologies are uh, being adopted. A PDH, SDH, DWDM, so on. Then mobile telephony or uh, local area networks that could be uh, Ethernet or uh, could be a token ring type of arrangement or a gigabyte type of uh, Ethernet uh, LAN connectivity. Then further you have uh, XDSL, EDSL, HDSL, uh, VDSL uh, type of technologies which are being adopted. Uh, for the communication and using the communication and technology uh, various technologies. So, services various services could be uh, provided like the voice uh, and fax, it could be the modem which will be helpful for the communicating uh, to the uh, further uh, email, uh, video surveillance, video conferencing, tele networking telemetry, data communication, then SCADA that is supervisory control and uh, data acquisition, then uh, teleprotection and finally, the management. So, several of these services are being uh, used with the help of the proper communication and uh, technology media. Uh, so, all these are very important uh, for the SCADA or uh, the smart grid which is coming up and uh, very helpful uh, for the electrical utilities uh, to see that a proper data management or uh, monitoring of the system is very important. So, power line uh, carrier uh, communication system a uh, very important which is being uh, done uh, with the help of uh, the power uh, transmission lines. Uh, here uh, this could be anywhere from 40 kilohertz to 100 
or up to sometimes a 500 kilohertz uh, depending upon the equipments which have been uh, used. A simple example here you can see the transmission system uh, you have uh, a line trap or a wave trap uh, which is an equipment uh, used for the communication uh, system. So, this line trap or a wave trap is uh, being installed in the substations of uh, EHV or a ultra high voltage uh, substations and this will help in uh, communication uh, of the data transfer. So, basically uh, this again uh, consists of a coupling capacitor, the CVTs and uh, coupling filters uh, which are uh, connected to this further the data is being uh, used in the power line uh, carrier control terminal and this could again be using the RTU that is a uh, remote uh, uh, terminal units or remote telemetry units uh, in the SCADA system where uh, the information like the voice, the data or the protection for this equipment could be uh, done. So, employing several intelligent electronic devices that is IEDs and uh, digital uh, protective relays, this power line carrier communication is very useful uh, in the power uh, networks at uh, very high voltage and ultra high voltage uh, ranges and for the communication aspects. So, the application of uh, power line uh, uh, communication is mainly uh, as mentioned it could be for transmission of voice data, this data could be transferred through the uh, remote uh, telemetry units and the protection signals. Uh, from the intelligent electronic devices which have been uh, used for uh, the SCADA or the smart grid applications. So, power line uh, carrier equipment is one of the important component uh, for the data acquisition uh, for the helping the communication aspect in the using the power lines. So, here the carrier equipment required for communication. Uh, or for the relaying and telemetry is basically connected to the line that is uh, through a high frequency cable, a coupling capacitor and a wave trap as shown here. Uh, this is uh, connected through the coupling capacitor, a coupling filter and a line uh, through the line or wave trap uh, which is uh, shown here. So, this uh, wave trap or line trap uh, is installed at the line entrance um, in the substation and the coupling capacitors are installed in the line side of the wave trap and are normally uh, base mounted as shown here. So, these uh, wave traps or line traps uh, up to 145 kV voltage uh, could be mounted on the gantry structures on which a line is terminated at the substation or there should be a special uh, arrangement uh, above the higher voltages uh, more than 220 kV or 400 kV where this wave traps could be uh, planned or uh, wave traps could be uh, 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 where this uh, mounted that is very, very important. So, however, these line traps or wave traps uh, for voltage levels above 220 uh, or 245 kV, uh, this require a separate insulating stacks, uh, the clearances from the ground uh, on the mounting of structures and looking into the clearances or maintaining the appropriate heights uh, depending upon the voltage level uh, of the operation of this uh, line traps or wave traps is uh, to be properly uh, mounted. So, this is one of the example you can see here. These are the various uh, wave traps uh, or a line traps. This is uh, the closer view of the line traps, uh, how it is uh, being uh, uh, mounted. Uh, you can uh, see here uh, in the substation at the entry level, uh, this power line carrier, it will be helpful for the power line carrier communication. Again, it consists of several components including the surge arrester inside where in case of a lightning strike, the arrester uh, will help. Uh, to see that this line trap or a wave trap uh, does not get damaged. So, this is a typical uh, arrangement in any uh, substation for a line or a wave trap uh, power line carrier communication. 
So, as mentioned earlier uh, this shows a single line diagram of the communication aspect a line which may be typically uh, 13 to 14 kV could be carrying a 1200 amps at a frequency mentioned here a three phase line. Uh, so, all the uh, arrangements uh, like uh, the current transformers a potential transformers a circuit breakers so on are uh, basically connected for the metering aspects and uh, from the suitable uh, arrangement of a line or wave traps uh, this could be communicated to the communication system uh, where it will be helpful for the data and uh, monitoring of the information. So, communication networks uh, could contain uh, multiple communication loops, it could be internal or uh, external networks and the status of the internal or external it is important is at the health and how the data collection uh, for the communication. The usage could be the fiber optic uh, connections or through a conductor uh, of copper uh, conductors. So, several means of communication are being employed in the substations. So, this information is very helpful as now uh, we look uh, for the greater challenges uh, particularly for the smarter grid networks as the voltage level goes higher the network electrical network is so complicated uh, we should have uh, a smarter grid uh, networks uh, which will be helpful uh, for uh, selecting the right network technology uh, particularly to avoid the standard uh, asset management and uh, the network solutions uh, some which have been chosen should be able to deliver the sufficient capacity for the monitoring, uh, but uh, cannot support the network requirements uh, for other uh, smart grid uh, applications. So, the choosing of this networks which could be only for uh, the present requirement have to be uh, properly uh, planned. So, that uh, when the network is uh, expanded uh, these uh, devices uh, should be also tried to be used. So, the utilities have to suitably select the network solution considering the future uh, uh, application and also the network uh, requirements. And there is also uh, important aspects like the cyber security threats uh, which are real and uh, will continue to evolve over the time. So, proper uh, planning for these uh, threats and the information uh, connected with this is also a challenge uh, in the network uh, grid networks. So, how do we select a network a communication a strategy is an important aspect before uh, selecting the communication strategy are two important as approaches are available uh, first being the traditional approach the second being the strategic uh, approach. So, the traditional approach uh, here again depends on the network per project it could be a build pay as you uh, go that is as you increase the network capability or the traditional approach could be going in for the SCADA that is the supervisory control and data acquisition uh, systems. Then uh, going in for distribution automation is one uh, uh, traditional approach and going in for field data application. So, gathering the data in the field this could be the traditional approaches. The strategic could be a layered type of uh, communication or different architecture uh, which supports uh, the information uh, or network communication and also supports for present and future a smart grid application. So, here the planning is uh, a different in comparison to the traditional approach uh, where not only for the present the future applications are also being considered in the strategic approach. A point to be noted is uh, the present day uh, the supervisory control and data acquisition uh, which is being uh, 
monitored, uh, the communication which uses uh, increasingly is uh, as per the standards IEC 80870 or IEC 104 uh, is the protocols which are being used uh, for the present day SCADA communication uh, in the by the electrical utilities. So, this uh, shows uh, arrangement for the SCADA monitoring. SCADA is a supervisory control and uh, data acquisition uh, where you can monitor the entire data from various uh, uh, various data uh, which have been uh, obtained taking super, uh, proper measures in case of uh, the emergency and also try to monitor analyze the data very important. The SCADA system uh, could be used for several of the applications and uh, in case of electrical or utilities this has been a boon for the utility engineers where the data um, monitoring the control uh, has been uh, being uh, done with the help of uh, the, the data acquisition which is being gaining very very important uh, in the country. So, how is the SCADA functions or uh, any uh, working of a SCADA system is typically this is basically a human machine interface. So, it has a data and a control arrangements which the data and controls uh, are through the programming uh, logic controllers uh, help of uh, programming logic controllers. And this data and control information is got from various equipments which are in the field. So, the uh, sensors which have been uh, placed near the equipments this data from the sensors is communicated to the PLC further the data and the control. Uh, system where the entire uh, uh, through the SCADA that is a supervisory control and data acquisition uh, you can see monitor uh, you can uh, uh, try to uh, see the analysis uh, perform the analysis and take a, a right decision. So, the SCADA system performs uh, mainly uh, four important uh, functions. The first is the data acquisition from the equipments. Then the network data communication how the equipment data through the sensors is communicated to the programming logic controllers further to the SCADA machine or a SCADA server. Uh, then the data presentation the data which is obtained is being presented monitored and analyzed and fourth is the control very important. So, based on the data which is available uh, suitably uh, analyzed and wherever necessary the proper control. Uh, uh, management is being done. So, important four functions of a SCADA system these uh, above functions that is uh, the four functions are performed by uh, the four kinds of uh, SCADA components. So, what are the four uh, components as mentioned earlier it could be the sensors the first is the sensors these sensors could be a digital or analog and the control with the help of control relays that directly uh, interface with the managed system. The so, second is the remote uh, telemetry units which I was mentioning RTUs. So, these RTUs are uh, a small uh, computerized units uh, basically deployed in the uh, field at a specific locations uh, and the RTUs or uh, remote telemetry units serve as a local collection points. So, data collection points. So, if you have placed the RTU the local collection near the equipment this entire data is being uh, sent or the data is being gathered uh, from the sensors through the sensors and through the delivery command it sends through the PLC's data control and it is being sent to the uh, SCADA uh, uh, terminal. So, this is how it performs very important and delivers the commands to the control uh, through the relays. So, third is a SCADA master uh, unit uh, here basically these are larger uh, terminals or the computer terminals or a consoles uh, what is known. These serve as a central processing units for the SCADA system. So, the master unit usually provides a human uh, machine interface to the system 
and automatically tries to regulate uh, the managed system in response to the sensor inputs, the data which is being obtained. Uh, this uh, tries to take a decision making uh, system where uh, will be helpful for the diagnosing in case of faults and so on. The final uh, point is the communication network which uh, connects the SCADA master unit to the remote uh, telemetry units uh, which are installed in the field. So, this entire uh, system uh, shows or explains the basic or uh, the importance of uh, working of a supervisory control and a data acquisition uh, system which is being used uh, in several utilities uh, for monitoring the data trying to get the information of the various components, various equipment data. So, continuing the program PLC or uh, the program mobile logic controller uh, uh, is being used. Basically, this uh, PLC or a program logic controller is a hardware uh, which has a controller, a device uh, which uh, can be programmed and it is uh, embedded in the panel. Uh, then the SCADA as mentioned is the supervisory control and entire data acquisition uh, system. Uh, it is basically a software which is used to monitor uh, and control the power line uh, or programmable uh, logic uh, controller. Uh, this software has to be installed either in the computer or in the main server of the monitoring uh, section. So, this is a uh, important point to be considered. So, in general uh, the SCADA systems focus on continuous monitoring and parameterization. The software which is used is basically for operation or higher level above hardware that is uh, programmable logic controllers, it could be input output modules or uh, the data loggers, could be sensors counters or any metering uh, devices. This uh, connects and uh, the data is gathered or collected. The SCADA system uh, can communicate with surrounding technology environment uh, through a specialized industrial uh, networks. And SCADA technology could be used for increasingly uh, the usage of a normal uh, computer network particularly with the standard uh, communication protocols which are available or the technology available uh, during the present uh, uh, or the installation of this SCADA arrangement. So, it could be a Modbus, it could be a MBUS uh, 7 or several other technologies. Again these technologies are adopted or adapted uh, depending upon the newer technologies which uh, come into the existence. So, the SCADA systems are highly scalable very important uh, with number of uh, processed uh, variables and could vary from a few hundred or thousands uh, based on the complexity, the extensity of the monitored uh, technology. Uh, the SCADA systems integrate also with the web technologies by providing remote access to monitoring systems via internet for use of normal. Uh, PCs, tablets, smartphones, etcetera. So, present day this uh, usage or integrating with the web technologies is being used uh, for the electrical uh, billing or the payment uh, for the electrical billing so on and so forth. So, there is a important uh, aspect with the technology being uh, upgraded and the technology being used. So, the SCADA systems can also be used for all sectors it to collect technological data and monitor the correct progression of the process. It could be an industrial process like example the power plants, the entire uh, SCADA system could monitor the data and see the performance of various equipments. It could be helpful in heating plants, uh, switching rooms or the manufacturing uh, production lines, it could be uh, smelting plants chemical uh, packaging lines, warehouses, uh, it could be used for the proper building management uh, particularly for uh, the security, the access system, 
could be used for the ecology, uh, emission monitoring, water treatment plants, many, many, many uh, other advantages. So, the SCADA systems are much more affordable than in the past and have penetrated into new areas outside the industry sectors. Uh, it could also being very recently being employed uh, for uh, the monitoring of the family houses etcetera, etcetera. So, very important uh, so hence for the power communication or the power uh, line uh, uh, power transmission and power uh, distribution uh, SCADA is being also employed in a very uh, uh, which is very being very useful. So, the SCADA is a combination of various equipments which provides an operator at the remote location uh, with real time information uh, particularly uh, the data which is available on analog or a discrete uh, measurements. In addition to this uh, the provision for controlling the loads uh, that is the voltages of the control substation from the remote uh, location is possible uh, and the analog parameters uh, which are uh, giving the continuous electrical uh, signals this could be a current uh, voltage a uh, frequency or could be active or reactive power and energy which is a very helpful uh, data and also the discrete parameters like the switching signals uh, which could include the status of the circuit breakers or the isolators or the transformer taps uh, which presently it is being connected and necessary alarms and relay indications etcetera uh, could be obtained with the information and a suitable uh, action could be taken in the substation by the utility engineers or the distribution uh, uh, engineers in the uh, transmission or a distribution utility. The SCADA architecture very important this uh, basically consists of a master station and uh, typically a collection of uh, computers uh, peripherals uh, with the appropriate input and output substation uh, systems that enables the dispatchers to closely monitor the state of power system and uh, helps in controlling the power networks. Uh, it is a 100 percent standby equipment and should be made available uh, with total redundancy at every stage including its uh, modems which are being used for the communication. The local uh, remote telemetry units with filters uh, that may be analog uh, to digital converters, uh, multiplexes, uh, modems etcetera form components as a master uh, substation for the architecture in the SCADA. The field station or the remote location where the sensors are being uh, uh, employed uh, comprises a different uh, transducers. It could be analog and digital cards and uh, control cards. It could be analog to digital converters, uh, remote terminal uh, uh, transmitter units or modems, etc. So, in case of uh, transfer of speech, data, and controls between the master and the field station. Different communication systems are presently available which could include a power line carrier communication, optical fiber communication, the satellite communication etcetera. So, the master and remote stations in essential for accuracy in computation, analysis of data and various uh, stations as any mismatch in the time uh, will introduce errors. So, there is also a global uh, position system time reference uh, which enables uh, the synchronizing the sample time in different substations uh, when the time uh, tagged phases of AC voltage or currents up to 50 to 60 times per second are also acquired. So, working as mentioned uh, previously uh, several parameters uh, could be like the voltage, current, power again the power could be active or reactive power. Uh, the energy, the frequency etcetera from the designated lines and uh, transformers in each control station are communicated to the respective transducers which convert to the signals, current signals and connect to analog to digital converters uh, through the analog cards. 
these uh, analogue to digital converters are connected uh, to the remote uh, telemetry units uh, which scans the data from the external devices. And uh, the analogue and digital uh, control cards with the present system scans every 10 seconds data. So, this uh, follows the protocol IEC uh, standard protocol 870501 protocol uh, which will respond to the controls sent from the master uh, substations. So, various modems and data communication devices are used to convert the digital signal to analog and uh, vice versa. The modems which are being used allow the digital uh, transmission over analog communication and these are used for long distant uh, data transmission. The master uh, station processor which uh, captures data from the remote term telemetry unit and uh, sends the requests to all the RTUs within uh, period of 10 seconds. This data is processed and is being communicated to the SCADA server uh, for viewing by the operator for taking proper uh, action or uh, necessary action with the information which is available. So, this is the typical uh, working of the SCADA. And now, uh, we come uh, to the important uh, aspects of the supervisory control and data acquisition in the country which is being uh, followed uh, in the various uh, layers of uh, uh, communication. You can see the graph here it shows the national load dispatch center how the SCADA uh, control uh, arrangement is being employed in the country. This is the national load dispatch center. The national load dispatch center is being communicated uh, via the regional load dispatch center RLDCs. You have uh, 5 uh, regional load dispatch centers here uh, northern load dispatch center, eastern load, southern load, uh, western load and northeastern load dispatch centers. So, these uh, 5 are further connected to the state load dispatch centers. This state load dispatch center few examples are given here. From the state load dispatch centers further uh, are connected to the area load dispatch centers. So, this is how the hierarchy of the supervisory control and data acquisition is being followed uh, for the transmission system in the country. So, area load dispatch centers you have uh, divided and these area load dispatch centers are further getting the information from the remote telemetry units uh, which are being placed in the substations at various locations in the respective areas. So, this is how the level of uh, uh, SCADA arrangement is being followed in the country transmission network. We will look into the important uh, functions of the uh, various uh, load dispatch uh, centers how the hierarchy is being followed for the communication and proper uh, management of this system. So, national load dispatch center this is a important apex body which ensures entire integrated operations of the entire country uh, power system and discharges the main functions. It supervises over the all the regional load dispatch centers, schedules and dispatches the electricity over the inter regional links in accordance with the grid standards which are specified by the central electricity authority of the country or the electrical commission or the central electrical commission uh, in coordination with the load res, uh, regional load dispatch centers. It has to coordinate with the regional load dispatch centers for achieving maximum economy and also efficiency in power uh, operation of the national grid. It helps in monitoring of the operations and grid security of the national uh, grid. It supervises and control over the inter regional links as may be required for ensuring uh, better stability of the power system under it uh, control. Proper coordination has to be made with the regional power committees for regional outage schedule in the national perspective to ensure optimum utilization of uh, power resources. Uh, so, the national load dispatch center coordinates with the uh, regional load dispatch centers for energy accounting of uh, inter-regional exchange of power. It coordinates uh, for the restoration of synchronous operation of uh, national grid with the regional load dispatch centers. This coordinates for transnational exchange of powers, provides operational feedback 
for national grid planning to the central electricity or a util, uh, transmission utility and collection and levy of uh, fees or charges for generating companies based on the licenses involved in the power system may be specified by the central uh, regulatory commission uh, government of India. So, the dissemination of the information relating to operations of transmission system in accordance with the directions of regulations which are issued by the central commission or the government are also being coordinated with the help of national load uh, dispatch centers. Uh, in accordance with the electricity act 2003 uh, section 28 and 29, the major roles and functions of uh, the regional load dispatch centers are uh, again the regional load dispatch center is an apex body which ensures integrated operation of power systems in a concerned region. I have mentioned 5 regions. Uh, so, these regional load dispatch centers shall comply with principles or guidelines and methodologies in respect of uh, wheeling and optimum scheduling and dispatch of electricity which is specified by the central commission uh, in the grid code by followed to be by the national load dispatch uh, centers. And also the regional load dispatch centers shall be responsible for optimum scheduling and dispatch of electricity within the region. Again this is in accordance with the contract which is entered with the licensed uh, or generating companies operating in that particular region, uh, monitoring the grid operations and the regional load dispatch center should be able to keep the accounts of quantity of electricity transmitted through the regional grid and exercise supervision and control over the interstate transmission uh, system and also should be responsible for uh, carrying out a real time operation for grid control and dispatch of electricity uh, within the range through secure and economic operations. Further the regional load dispatch center may give directions and exercise supervision and control as may be required for ensuring stability of the grid operations and for achieving the maximum economy and efficiency in operation of the power system in the region uh, which it is under its uh, control. So, similarly the functions of the state load dispatch centers are framed. Here again the state uh, load dispatch center uh, the system operation control uh, of the grid covering the contingency analysis and operational plan on real time basis. Uh, SLDCs have to properly schedule or reschedule of the generation. They should be uh, contemplating the system restoration and following grid disturbances. The metering and data collection of energy transactions with the state grid and the SLDC have to compile and the furnishing detail uh, data pertaining to the system operation and the operation of the state pool account, state reactive energy account and other functions which are directed by the commission. And finally, the role of area load dispatch center is mainly to assist the state load dispatch centers to ensure integrated operation of a power system in the state grid. Uh, they should also assist the state load dispatch center for better monitoring the grid operations within that area. They should assist the state load dispatch center for supervision and proper control over interstate uh, transmission systems within its area uh, which it will be responsible uh, for carrying out the real time operations and has to keep account of electricity transmitted through its control area. So, these are various uh, functions of the national load dispatch center, uh, regional load dispatch center, state load uh, and the role of uh, the area uh, load dispatch centers. Thank you.